Hi, I'm Hope and this is my sister Pearl and we are here to walk you through Timberdoodle's 2024 kindergarten curriculum kit. So let's take a look first at the different um, levels. We have the basic, complete, and elite. Basic is what it is, what it says, the basics that you will need for homeschooling your kindergartner this year. So we include math, language arts, critical thinking. This will get you through the year. If you want a more complete, well-rounded program, that is the complete level. So this includes history, science, it includes STEM and art. Um, but if you want all the bells and whistles, all the fun stuff that we found this year, um, that is the elite. And so this includes extra art, extra STEM, games to play with your child, um, more critical thinking, a little bit more of everything so that if you have the budget and the time to give your child all of that, we recommend the elite. Now let's take a look at language arts. The core component in the language arts for kindergarten is the all about reading level one. If you're not sure where your child's at um, on the reading skills, feel free to jump onto our website and take the placement test to make sure you're ordering the correct level. Most children will fit into the level one for kindergarten. You're gonna work, start off with letter sounds and quickly have your child beginning to read. What I love about the all about reading is, is it's open and go. So you to open the teacher's manual to the day's lesson. This is what I do with my boys. I, I show up, I open up to the teacher's manual, pull out the activity sheets out of the student book that it says it will need or pull the reader over and open up to the right chapter that they'll be reading that day. And that's as easy as it is. You just work your way through the lesson on the teacher's manual, reading what they tell you to read, saying what they tell you to say. It is that easy. Um, the activity book for the students does include all the colorful pages that you will need for the different activities. It includes the reading practice lists. Um, and then you do have the colorful readers that go with it too, which we like. It's hard to find good readers, um, especially for this age group. So we like the fun and engaging pictures and the easy text for them to read. Let's take a look at Spelling UC. So Spelling UC is uh, a really fantastic research-based uh, approach to spelling, and we have it in kindergarten through sixth grade. At the kindergarten level, you'll be doing a lot of speaking and listening ex exercises. So some really simple dictation of short vowel sounds, starting with three-letter words, progressing up to some five-letter words, but all with very basic phonic skills that reinforce what your child is reading, um, reinforce their handwriting, letter formation, letter recognition, a lot of wonderful skills wrapped up in spelling UC level A. Next, we have the italic handwriting A book, and this covers um, lowercase and uppercase for all 26 letters. It groups the letters by their, their formation styles, so it groups the easiest to form letters together and then increases in difficulty as you work through the book. Um, again, it gives your child tracing practice, writing on their own practice, has a lot of instruction in there for you as well. That's all covered in there. And last in the language arts category, we have Sing a Song of Seasons, which is an anthology of a poem for each day of the year. There's so much to love about this book. I love the beautiful illustrations. I love that the poetry is very diverse. So you have some poems that are very familiar, some that are unfamiliar, some that were originally composed in English, some that are translated. So you're really broadening your child's horizons a lot this year. I think you'll find you want to read it with your child. You want to see what each day's poem is. Next, let's take a look at math. So for math this year, we have Matthew C. Primer. Um, again, if you are not sure where your child's at in their math skills, feel free to hop on our website and take the placement test for that as well. But for most children, Primer is the correct level for kindergarten. Um, what we love about Matthew C. is it is mastery based. Now in Primer, it is more familiarity based than mastery because you're, again, introducing your child to these concepts. So we don't need to worry about yet if they have mastered them by the end of kindergarten. Um, they'll work more on that in first grade. But you're going to be introducing your child to writing numbers. You're going to be introducing them to basic addition and subtraction, to geometric shapes, to skip counting, telling time. Now who lives next door to the units? The tens. The tens. This is where I live. See? Blue, blue, tall, tall. So this is my house, okay? And how many friends can I have or nine. children nine. living with me here? Nine. nine. That's it, because that's why we count from zero to nine, then we start over. So let's put two in there today. So how many tens are home? Two. two. All of this is included in this program. Plus, it comes with the manipulatives, which to me is a huge deal. Um, I've had some of my children have struggled greatly with math and being able to take out the manipulative blocks and walk them through what the concept on the pages in real life has really helped clarify for them and give them that understanding that they really need, especially at this early age. And along with that, we supplement with the multiplayer game Jump One. 
I love that it pulls in a little bit of competition in a really simple, um, easy to understand game format. So your child will be taking, trying to play a card that's one number higher or one number lower than the card on the table, working with numbers one through 10 and with some wild cards. So there's a little bit of strategy um, and a lot of number practice in a very uh, fun, interactive way. Next, let's cover thinking skills. Now here at Timber Doodle, we have a huge focus on thinking skills. We believe that if you teach your child how to think, they will be able to learn later in life. So even if you accidentally have a terrible year at home and you don't do much um, schooling and you leave off all the history or you leave off all the science, it won't matter if you've taught your child how to think. They will be able to figure this out later. And so for us, this is a huge component. And in kindergarten, it's really fun because we include a couple workbooks that are colorful and easy to use. And then we include a bunch of games. So your child is engaging that critical thinking um, skill without even knowing it. So let's look into that a little bit. So the backbone of thinking skills in our basic kits is the Kuhnman Thinking Skills book. So this is a compilation of four different Kuhnman workbooks covering the skills of spatial reasoning, logic, same or different, and creativity. And what I love about this book is how um, they have worked hard to break down the skills into incremental steps. So the first page is almost too easy. Last page, far more complex. A great way to gradually um, build your child's logic, build your child's spatial reasoning in a way that's not overwhelming. Next, we have the OLSAT test prep. This book was made to prep your child for the OLSAT test. That's not why we included it in this curriculum. We included it in this curriculum because it gives you a great springboard for discussing with your child their decisions and their logical questions. So you ask them a question, they'll give you the answer, and then you can ask them, why did you give me that answer? So it gives you that great springboard to discuss with them the reasoning behind their answers, right or wrong, um, and enables them to start to develop that skill of being able to defend their, their choices and to think critically, to say, well, that really didn't make any sense. Maybe I should rethink that and give you the answer that does make sense. So again, beginning to build those critical thinking skills. Next is Smart Farmer. This is a single player critical thinking game. This one works on especially spatial insight. It also works on planning, concentration, flexible thinking, and problem solving skills. The concept is that your child will set up the board with the animals and then needs to place the fences around them. In the earlier levels, that's all you're doing is fencing in the different animals with their pasture mates. In the harder levels, you also need to make sure each pasture includes a water trough. So again, it grows in complexity. I love that it's working on all these different um, critical thinking skills all through the format of making a farm. Next, we have Gobbly Gobbler. So this is a two player game that base, the basic concept is tic-tac-toe with a twist. So not only are you using the tic-tac-toe strategy, you also have the ability to gobble up each other's pieces. So that adds a whole nother layer of critical thinking and forward planning for you and your child. Honestly, it puts you as a parent on more equal footing with your child um, than in just in a typical tic-tac-toe game where you can often find yourself stalemated. Um, as you can see when the boys playing, it's really fun to be able to surprise each other with that extra move and complete your row. The other single player logic game we have in kindergarten is Five Little Birds. And what I love about Five Little Birds is it works on deductive reasoning, um, but in a very systematic sequential way. So the first couple challenges are really simple. Um, your child mostly matches the picture on where the birds go and then has to figure out maybe one or two. As the book progresses, the clues become more abstract and your child has to do a lot more deductive reasoning to figure out where each bird is supposed to go on the tree. Last few challenges, probably be uh, difficult even for you as a parent. Next, we have history and social studies. So in the classic version, we have My Story K. This is a beautiful book. It includes illustrations. It includes pictures. It includes a script for you to read with your child. So there's no prep necessary or very little prep necessary from you. Um, it's laid out so that you'll do it twice a week with your child, take it about a half an hour. Again, really easy way to be able to discuss things with your child, such as cultures, citizenship, geography, economics, all covered in this one program. In the non-religious kits, we have 180 days of social studies. And I love this book because it includes very achievable uh, workbook pages that your child will quickly complete. They'll feel a real sense of accomplishment, lots of black and white pictures, and it covers all four key topics of social studies. So you have your history, your geography, your economics, your civics, repeated throughout the year. Wonderful resource for your child. 
And lastly, we have the here and there picture book. So this is a picture book to walk you through the different cultural differences between here and there. Give your child a broader look at the world at large and how it, what the differences are between the different cultures. So what does travel look like here versus in Vietnam in the crowded streets? What does playing outdoors in Norway versus in Hong Kong look like? Um, how do people go shopping for groceries in different countries? And again, just gives your child a nice little overview in picture format of the different cultural experiences. Next, let's take a look at geography. So first off, we have the skill sharpness geography. This is a book that will take your child through the basic um, geographical concepts, like what is a map? How do you use one? What are land formations? What's the ocean and continents? All these different geographical concepts that it will cover with your child while also giving them some fun cut and paste activities, some matching activities and more all done in this engaging format. Next up, we have the Kids World Map Puzzle 100. So when you're looking for a map puzzle for your child, there's a lot to pick from. Here's why this one kind of hits the sweet spot for kindergarten. It has all of the countries labeled, um, or at least the ones big enough to see on the map labeled, so that your child, as they begin to read, can read the names of the countries for themselves, or for a reference for you as a parent, to, as your child says, what's this one over here? You don't have to try to remember. It also has a wonderful array of animals pictured both throughout the countries and on the oceans to make it easier for your child to assemble. And lastly, we have Around the World in 80 Mazes. I love this book because it takes you with Felix and Phoebe on adventures around the world in different settings. So you might be skiing the mountains of Norway or um, hiking the, the pyramids in Egypt, whatever it is, your child will get a exposed to a bunch of different geographical locations while exploring with Felix and Phoebe and also um, completing some mazes through using critical thinking. So just a fun look at around the world. Next, let's take a look at science. So the main component of science for kindergarten is the skill sharpener science. And that walks through basic concepts in physical science, life science, earth science, but in a very child-friendly fashion. So you'll be learning about where do animals live or how do things move? So lots of different activities that your child will complete with you throughout the workbook. Lastly, we have the Look Inside Your Body book. So at kindergarten, your child is curious about the world around them and their body. And so this will give you a fun overview of what's going on inside your body. So how do you build muscles? Or when the doctor feels for your pulse, what are they actually feeling? Or do feelings come from inside your heart? All these fun little facts about your body done through a Lift the Flat format. All right, let's take a look at STEM. For STEM in kindergarten, we have one really amazing, comprehensive kit, the Think Play Gears Extreme. So this kit covers uh, gears, pulleys, chains, as well as simple building. So your child will work on constructing three-dimensional models from two-dimensional instructions. Um, it's a really good visual skill as they are trying to pay attention and replicate. It's a good thinking skill, forward thinking of, oh wait, I can't put this piece on until I put this piece on. This kit really has so much to offer both both in the and the quality of the pieces and in the types of pieces that are included uh, your child will just learn and learn with it we often find that in building parents are often able to supply their child with a building kit of some sort um, and offer that to the child they have that in the home but where we often find the holes the overlooked category is being able to look at instruction and replicate it, um, to stick with it until they complete it. And so we feel like this kit does give you the base kit of having building supplies, but it does so much more with of than that to be able to step by step walk your child through building different models from easy to hard. And then while, like Pearl said, covering all these different things of pulleys and gears and all that cool stuff. Yeah, and, and really an incredible volume and assortment of models that your child will have completed by the end of the year. Now let's talk about emotional intelligence. Let's look first at learning about feelings flipbook. This is an awesome resource. So on one side of the book, you have the engaging picture for your child to be studying. And on the flip side, the side facing you, you have all the questions that you can discuss with your child. So you have the critical thinking questions. What's going on? Why does it, Why is this child feeling the way they're feeling in the picture? Tell me about the picture. Then you have the predictive questions. What do you think is going to happen next? What do you think the result is going to be after in the scene after this? Then you have the hypothetical problem solving questions. So, hey, they're visiting the hospital. Um, the little boy's never been to the hospital before. What can he do? He's feeling a little bit nervous. 
And then you have the connections um, questions. So how do you feel about going to the hospital? Have you ever been to the hospital? What do you remember about that? Or what would you be worried about if you did have to go to the hospital someday? All of these things written out for you to give you those prompts to discuss with your child, colorful pictures for your child to be looking at. It's a great way to lay um, the framework for discussing different life circumstances, how to respond to them and what other people's responses might be. Be the last one. Okay. Next, let's look at what's going on here, flashcards. So it's so important to be able to coach children through how to navigate social situations. You know, these are the times you should say thank you, or these are the times you should ask the other person, what's wrong? How can I help? What's going on here, flashcards, gives you both an opportunity to do that and some guided questions on the back to help you coach your child so they're ready to navigate different social um, problems, different social situations. So the Learn About Feelings flipbook will really help you go in depth with your child of what people are feeling, how the child might be feeling, versus the what's going on here flashcards is more going in depth of analyzing what's going on in the situation and knowing the right response. So both very important aspects of social emotional learning. Correct. The last aspect of emotional intelligence is happy, sad, feeling glad. And I really love this book for a few reasons. It's very fun for a child to be able to doodle in, complete the picture, feel like they've added something to the story. I also like that it's a little bit of problem solving. So it's not just what's happening here, but you know, the dog's sad because he dropped his ice cream on the ground, but you know what? You can problem solve that. You can draw him a new ice cream. So lots of um, solutions as well as just a great doodle drawing book for your children. Now let's take a look at the various art resources that we have. So first up is I Can Doodle Rhymes. And this is a book that's a little hard to place. Do you put it in language arts? Do you put it in art? It's really a little bit of both. You're working on your child's rhyming skills, but also their doodling skills. So can you draw a cup for the pup? Or can you draw um, berries to go with the cherries? So good for your child to find motor skills. Also good for building that really important uh, reading and pre-reading skill of rhyming. Next, we have giant animals. So your child will be able to follow along with a wordless instruction book that will help them to pay attention to detail, work on their fine motor skills while assembling three different giant animals using brads, stickers, and pop-out pieces. Next, we have the beautiful mosaic kit. This includes the little tiny square mosaic pieces that your child will be putting on the board following the numbers. So again, some number familiarity, some color familiarity, and they will turn out these wonderful works of art that they're proud to hang on the wall or give to grandma or just enjoy themselves. Next we have Aquarellum artworks. What I love about the Aquarellum set is that children can find it very achievable because of the wax barriers. So no matter how good your child's fine motor skills are, they can paint something really beautiful and really recognizable. They're also learning about color mixing. They're learning about mixing in water to lighten the colors. And at the end they have these gorgeous works of watercolor art. And last we have the Topsy Turvy scratch boards. Who doesn't enjoy using a scratch board? And these are wonderful because again, they come with the wordless instruction books to give your child the prompts to say, on this part of the octopus, I want you to put circles. And on this part, I want you to put lines. So they're following the directions, they're paying attention to detail, working on those fine motor skills, all while revealing this gorgeous picture underneath. It's awesome. And, and like you highlighted, it is a lot of details versus, you know, traditional scratch art is you just kind of try scratch to get it as much off as quick as you can. This is very different, very detail oriented, wonderful for a kindergartner. Let's take a look at our last category of learning tools. So first off, we have My First Pencils. These are a wider, shorter pencil designed for younger children so they don't fatigue their hands and so that there's less sharpening involved for more output. We also include the Faber-Castell pencil sharpener, and we like this pencil sharpener both for its sharpening ability, it's a stellar sharpener, but also that it has two sizes of pencil sharpening ability, so you can do both the thick My First pencils and the color pencils that we will talk about in a little bit. Yes, and it's got a super cute design that kids will like, and it also has the built-in shavings catcher, which is very convenient to not have a mess every time you sharpen a pencil. Yes. Next we have the Miori mini box organization. And this is just to help you organize all these learning tools in one place, grab it off the shelf, easy, don't even have to open it, it's ready to go. Next up we have the Faber-Castell colorful eco pencils. What I like about these pencils is they're triangular so they're not as likely to roll off the table. They do have the nice grip for holding um, and they're a fantastic set of colors for your child to be 
well equipped to complete all of the activities throughout their curriculum, uh, not saying, where could I find a color? Wonderful set of resources. And we've gone through a fair amount of pencils in our household, and I'm kind of picky. I don't like the way some pencils feel on the paper. I've got maybe some sensory issues going on, but I do like how the Faber-Castell ones go, feel, and so that is one reason that we have stuck with these pencils is because they have great leads and they feel good when you're coloring with them. So for a lot of children, sitting still to learn not something that can happen at the same time. You're either sitting still or you're learning. Um, and that's where the Needle Gummy Bear comes in. This is a wonderful handheld fidget for kids who are wigglers, whether that's because they're young or because maybe they are have some neurodivergence. So they are working with anxiety or they're working with ADHD. This can be a fantastic resource to help them um, be able to better focus as they learn. Okay. Let's talk about the handbook. Each handbook includes a short summary of each product, why it was included, and what we suggest for scheduling. So if you get the curriculum and you're saying, I have no idea how to incorporate um, these four art projects, or I have no idea how often should I use this game, we've got that covered for you. We've got the suggestions in there. Also, it includes access to our online scheduler. So our philosophy is you take the curriculum that you want to complete in the year, you you look at what you want to complete and you say, let's divide it up. So how many games do I need to um, accomplish every week to get this done by the end of the year? How many pages in math? How many lessons in reading, etc.? You plug that into our online scheduler and you will have then a checklist that you can either have a daily checklist or a weekly checklist to make sure that you are accomplishing everything that you want to so that by the end of the year, you've gone through your entire kindergarten curriculum. Yes, and so our online scheduler is pre-filled with all of our kindergarten items for you so that you don't have to go to all the legwork of, okay, of this many pages, divide it. It's all set up for you. You can pick um, how long of a school year you want. And like, like Hope said, you can pick between weekly and daily checklists. A lot of moms uh, like a daily checklist. We love weekly checklists and we, we think that you will too because a weekly checklist gives you so much flexibility but still the accountability that you need to make sure that you're moving forward and you will complete within the time frame you've decided on. Yeah. Also included in your handbook is the reading challenge. So you want to be reading with your child. You want to be giving them a wide exposure to a bunch of different topics, but sometimes that's kind of overwhelming to figure out how to do and to actually accomplish. So we've included in your handbook 36 weeks of different challenges. So you can be reading about horses or you can be reading about music or you'll be reading about Thanksgiving or you'll be reading about all these different topics. And in each of those different topics, we've included a number of titles um, as possibilities. So when you say, man, this week I really want to hit challenge number whatever to talk about Thanksgiving, but I don't even know what kind of books about Thanksgiving there are for this age group. We've listed some options for you in there so that you will be able to easily go to your library, figure out which titles they have, check them out and read them with your child. And again, that's where we've designed it this way and it gives you flexibility and structure. So the flexibility to say, I have a particular book about Thanksgiving. I really, I know I want to read it to my child. This would be the perfect time. Or like Hope was saying, I don't know of any good books about Thanksgiving. I need to go to the library, but I don't know where to start. So this, this challenge gives you both ways it, of approaching it. And helps you not to just read the type of books your child typically picks up. So exactly. not only about cars and trucks, let's also broaden your horizons to all these other topics. Yes. I think that covers it. We want to thank you for joining us for our 2024 kindergarten curriculum. If you have any questions, please contact us, call us, email us, chat us. Um, we're here to help. We want this to be a successful year for you and your child, and um, we hope that you have a wonderful year.